Look at you. You're just a fluffy little boy. You're just a fluffy little boy. You don't know how to do anything. Here, take this Arise Heart. <laughs> He's right. I am just a fluffy little boy. And I need to make a change. Well, if it isn't the fluffy little boy. Wait a minute. You're not a fluffy little boy anymore. No, I'm a fluffy little man. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT and this is 10 Minute Testing. Okay, we got super heavy down. Now we can look at the other tier zero super threat from Sayak. While it's obvious that we can call Pearly a good boy, can we truly call it a good deck? Presenting Pearly. So here's the list based off DKPs from a recent regional. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit series. Give them a look at www.ygopro. D -E -C -K dot com. With that, let's play with Pearly. Pearly is a series of fluffy widow babies composed of one main deck monster total. Its gimmick is that all of its quick play spells, called Memories, can discard a card to summon Pearly from deck. Each memory has a corresponding extra deck transformation, which appears when Pearly reveals an appropriate named quick play from the hand. I guess the lore is that Pearly remembers dinner and gets so excited it turns into Pearly Plump, which is not too far off of reality if my experience with Sadie is anything to go by. Unfortunately, the reveal, the discard, and the quick plays meant that pre Sayak, Pearly was just too high investment for too poor a payoff, and it languished somewhere below Ghost Trick in terms of playability. But everything changed when a second fluffy widow baby arrived. Pearlily solves literally every single problem with the archetype. Pearly on summon reveals the top three cards of the deck to maybe add a Pearly spell to the hand, whereas Pearlily guarantees it as a hard once per turn on summon. Pearly has to eat a card in the hand to rank up, whereas Pearlily can use quick plays in the graveyard as material, and finally Pearlily comes with their own memory, Sleepy, which if it's underneath an Xyz draws a card in the standby. Because this isn't a once per turn, three Sleepies and a Pearlyp can therefore translate into six draws, which makes the investment on the quick plays sting just a little less. This is all in service to Noir, a non once per turn shuffle that any deck has a rough time dealing with. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the non-engine. Three copies of Santa Claus, three copies of Gamma, and one copy of Driver. After that, we've got Format Staple, Droll, and Lockbird. For Pearlies, we have two Pearlily, which if normal or special summoned, can add a Pearly card from your deck to your hand, except the Quick Plays, and can target a Pearly Quick Play spell in your graveyard to special summon an Xyz monster from your extra deck that mentions that card by using this card you control as material, attaching that spell to the summoned monster. Now, those are hard ones per turns on the effects, which is completely different than Pearly. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can excavate the top three cards of your deck. If you do, you can add an excavated Pearly spell trap to your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. And once per turn during your main phase, you can reveal a pearly quick play spell in your hand. Special summon an Xyz monster from your extra deck that mentions that card by using this card you control as material and attach the revealed card to the summon monster. After that, we've got spells. For cards that don't have pearly in the title, we've got three copies of Triple Tactics Thrust and one Talents. For ones that do, we've got three copies of Sleepy Memory. This one prevents the next battle or effect damage you take uh, that occurs to you and afterwards allows you to discard a card to summon a level one pearly monster from deck. If an Xyz monster is made using this card as material, once per turn during your opponent's standby phase, you can draw a card. Pearly Pretty Memory gains you a thousand life points as well as your opponent, then allows you to discard a card, special summon a level one pearly monster from your deck, and if an Xyz monster is made using this card as material, you can send a card you control to the graveyard, then target a card your opponent controls to attach it to this card. Uh, the next one is Pearly Delicious Memory, very critical because it makes Plump, which is usually how you're going to be attaching a significant amount of these spells to your Xyz monsters. This card allows you to choose a monster on the field until the end of the next card that can't be destroyed by battle, and after choosing a card, you can apply the following effect, discard a card, and if you do, special summon a level 1 Pearly monster from deck, and an Xyz monster that has this card as material gains 300 attack and defense for each material attached to it. Importantly, there has to be a monster on the field to activate this one, so sometimes it's hard to get it off turn 1. Finally, Pearly Happy Memory, choose a card on the field until the end of the next turn, the first time it would be destroyed by a card effect it is not and then after choosing a card you can apply the following effect discard a card summon a pearly from deck and an Xyz monster made with this as material can attack monsters a number of times each battle phase up to the number of happy memory attached plus one finally we have some non quick plays three my friend pearly this card allows you to pay 500 to reveal three pearly cards from your deck and one is randomly added to your hand and the rest are shuffled back in and if a face up pearly Xyz monster leaves the field because of an opponent's card even during the damage step you can add up to three pearly quick play spells with different names from your graveyard to your hand finally we're playing one copy of stray pearly street this card prevents your opponent from targeting 
summoning pearly monsters you control with card effects the turn they are special summoned and once per turn if a face of pearly exes monster you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card you can special summon a level one pearly monster from your deck or graveyard then during the end phase you can target a pearly exes monster on the field attach a pearly quick play spell from your deck or graveyard to that monstrous material finally we've got three infinite and permanents one destructive daruma karmican as a triple tactics thrust target for when you are going first and one pure leap target a pearly exes monster you control special summon a pearly exes monster with a different rank by using that target as material but return it to the extra deck during the end phase of the next turn you can banish this card from your graveyard to target up to three pearly monsters in your graveyard shuffle them back into the deck in the extra we've got two zeus one x pearly happiness this card can be exes summoned by using a rank two monster you control that has five or more materials and during your main phase you can detach a material negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of the turn can't be responded to and if this card has a level one pearly monster as material, you know, good luck. When an attack is declared involving this card that has five or more materials, inflict 1500 damage to your opponent. This is an OTK machine as opposed to Noir, which is a control machine. This card can be Xyz summoned by using a rank two. You control the five more materials. It's unaffected by your opponent's activated effects while it has five or more materials. And you can detach two materials from this card to put a target your opponent controls or has in their graveyard on the bottom of the deck. Uh, it's a quick effect if it has a level one pearly as material. We're playing one downered, one copy of E Pearly Happiness at the end of the damage if this card battled you can add a pearly card from your deck to your hand and if it has happy memory as material you can have the attack of a face-up monster on the field up to thrice per turn when you activate a pearly quick play spell you can attach that card on the field to this card as material then return to spell trap your opponent controls to the hand two copies of e pearly beauty once per turn you can target an effect monster your opponent controls negate its effects till the end of the turn this is a quick effect if this card has pretty memory as material and up to thrice per turn when you activate a pearly quick play spell card you can attach that card on the field to this card as material then change the battle position of a monster your opponent controls and finally two copies of e pearly plump this is the most important one because once per turn you can target up to two spells or traps in your graveyard and attach them to this card as material that's a quick if it has delicious memory as material and up to thrice per turn when you activate a pearly quick play spell card you can attach that card in the field to this card as material then banish a monster on the field until the end phase after that we've got a princess sprite an assembled nightingale and on some blue robin which is frequently part of your end board and a protector of the agent's moon which gets out of a lot of floodgates in the side we are special summoning from the deck so vanity's fiend is kind of at home as is kurikara div incarnate one copy of harpy's feather duster two cosmic cyclone three evenly and three summon limit so with that let's jump into the games our first match is up against dragon link and god does it feel good to open all engine in this deck a lot of the time you want to open a couple of hand traps alongside something like a cash tier or unicorn but this is a deck where opening three quick plays and a continuous spell feels excellent in draw phase we're going to begin with a copy of sleepy memory that's going to summon from deck a per lily we'll activate the effect in order to grab from deck to hand a per leap and then proceed to main phase we're going to go from my friend pearly we're going to reveal a couple of cards and what do you know if you reveal three of the same card you always get delicious memory we're going to go delicious memory targeting our copy of per lily and going into a pearly and let's see what we get off the top of the deck. Okay, we'll take up my friend Pearly. Though we can't activate it, it's at least material. We'll go Lily into Plump here and then activate the effect of the Plump in order to get all of our spells out of the graveyard. Next, we'll go for Happy Memory, activating the effect of the Plump so it is five materials. From here, we can activate the effect of the Pearly to find off the top. Okay, wow, even a follow-up Delicious Memory. From here, we can activate the effect of Pearly to go into Plump and then end on Noir. Plump effect doing one, setting one, and having access to two Noir at the end of all of this. Our opponent's going to go for Magnemut and use the effect of Magnemut in order to grab themselves a very powerful full playmaker we'll go for noir early to draw a card they're going to go for chaos space wow that is just a wonderful card to attach under plump we will do so and then we will go for leap leap is going to rank us up into noir at which point we are going to activate noir in order to target that safer because we know they have a druis worm they're going to go for uh, the effect of druis worm and we will noir again at which point they will concede so it's time for game two and our opponents on super heavy samurai sword soul yeah, expect to see Wakaushi as an engine in a lot of decks that love normal summoning. We've both opened Droll and Lockbird, so this is going to be a blast. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Super Heavy Samurai Bike, and we usually don't Droll here because we're a little afraid of Gamma. They're going to go for Wakaushi for Big Benkai, then activate the effect of the Big Benkai, and now that there's a monster on their side of the field, I feel pretty confident firing that off. They are going to get to go to Soul Gaia Booster, and they can Booster to summon itself out, go into Ash Dragon, use Ash Dragon and Wakaushi here to both set scales and summon back the bike before going for a Baron to Fleur. Afterwards, they're going to normal summon a copy of Moye. Oh my god and the cat's out of the bag they're gonna go chi shao set one and pass we draw for turn and um well enjoy santa claus we'll go for delicious memory here targeting the santa claus for a per lily we'll activate the effect of the per lily we will grab from deck to hand a my friend pearly and there is the droll and lockbird we'll go for the per lily effect they will go for chi shao but no big deal we should be able to do it from here we're gonna go happy memory into a pearly we're gonna activate the effect of the pearly and fight off the top of the deck nothing but our opponent is greedy and does not black out here which means they're about to get zeus we are going to do four and four and overlay for downard overlay for zeus you can't activate blackout if i only control one card so everything's going to the graveyard we'll pass 
pass back to our opponent. And the thing about Super Heavy Samurai is that it really needs two cards to pop off. Our opponent's going to go Idhara into Monk into Idhara into Moye, which means we probably have to kill them this turn. But that shouldn't be too difficult because we already have all the tools we need. We're going to go Sleepy Memory here to summon Perlily. We're going to activate the effect of the Perlily. That Perlily's going to grab a My Friend Perly. We'll go for the effect of Perlily in order to go into a Plump. Use Plump Effect in order to fill itself up from the graveyard. Then activate My Friend Perly in order to grab from deck to hand another copy of Delicious Memory. We'll activate Delicious Memory for its on-field effect, then chain the effect of Plump to attach it. And what do you know? We've got five materials. Let's make Happiness. We'll go to the battle phase, attack, deal 15, and then deal the remainder in lethal damage. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Cash Tira, and... This hand is pretty much all non-engine. God, I really do not like this format. I put it's opened Droll and Ash Blossom, which is frustrating, to say the least. We'll go Happy Memory into Lily. We're going to activate the effect of the Lily in order to grab a My Friend Pearly, and there is Droll and Lockbird. Okay, we'll go Lily here, targeting the Happy Memory so we can go to Happiness. Then we'll fire off Tasking, but our opponent has Ash Blossom for it. Oh my god, we played for it and everything. Okay, no big deal. They're going to go for a Fenrir and follow it up with a Prime Planet. They are going to activate Birth, and then afterwards they'll normal summon a copy of Unicorn and grab themselves a Theosis. They'll go for Fenrir rear and I think we just have to imperm here so we don't die. Afterwards, going to fire off this copy of Theosis, targeting the Unicorn and getting a Rise Heart. They'll overlay for a copy of Shangri-Era, then activate Rise Heart, targeting Big Bang in order to cycle the effect of the Shangri-Era and the Big Bang and the Fenrir, and then afterwards overlay for a copy of a Rise Heart, a card that we literally could not beat but for the Santa Claus in our hand. Our opponent's going to banish everything and get in for 33 and 27, which is a lot, but decidedly not lethal. We theoretically could do this, and main phase two, they're going to fire off Pot of Prosperity, and things are looking a little more grim. Uh, they're going to grab from deck to hand. Oh my god, an infinite impermanence. Are you kidding me? We have to play through this as well. The writing seems kind of on the wall here, but we'll play it out uh, just for completionist sake, I suppose. Droll's just not what we needed. Uh, we're going to go first for the Santa Claus over the Macrocosmos, then we'll fire off my friend, but unfortunately that triggers birth, and because cards were banished face down, they can then use Shangri-Era and then the follow-up Prime Planet to destroy our continuous spell before we can even activate it. So it's time for game two, and oh, Driver, right where I want him. Okay, at least there's no Droll this time. In draw phase, we're going to go for the Sleepy Memory, followed up with a Lily, and our opponent will Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. No big deal, we should be able to do this. We're going to begin with a copy of Pearly. We need a little luck. Let's get it twisted. Oh, thank God, another quick play. All right, we're going to grab another Sleepy Memory. We'll fire it off, pitching Pearly for Pearly. We'll activate the effect of the Pearly. Need something else here. Delicious is great. Ooh, but my friend Pearly is just a little bit better. We're going to go for my friend, revealing a bunch of Deliciouses. We'll grab one hand, and now let's get off to the races. We're going to go for a Princess Sprite getting a little greedy here, and we are rewarded with a pretty memory. We're going to go for Delicious, sending the pretty memory to the graveyard, then go for the Pearlily. In order to make Plump, we'll activate the effect of the Plump in order to attach two, and then afterwards we'll set one and pass back to our opponent. They'll draw for turn, and it's Book of Moon! Oh gosh, they've done it in draw phase. Okay, this is disastrous. They're going to lead with Fenrir, then afterwards they're going to activate Theosis in order to go into a copy of Unicorn. Next, they're going to activate the effect of the Unicorn to get a copy of Birth and overlay for a copy of Big Eye. Oh, wrong move! We've got Summon Limit. They're going to go for Big Eye's effect in order to grab Sylvan Princess Sprite and try and draw a card. They do do so, but we have not activated a monster effect this turn. They're going to go for the Birth and pass it back because, of course, that Big Eye cannot attack. We will flip up that Plump and then activate My Friend Pearly. This should be the end of the game. We do grab another copy of Delicious Memory. We'll go Delicious Memory into Plump, and then we only have two summons. We will not need more than one. We're going to go plump here, getting a couple of cards to the back of it. We will send that summon limit to the graveyard to attach our opponents, or rather our Sylvan Princess Sprite. It's happiness time, and it's time for a concession. So it's time for that all-important game three, and uh-oh. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Dimension Shifter. Afterwards, we're going to, quote, play Yu-Gi-Oh! End quotes. Our opponent's going to go for a Cash Tier of Fenrir, and then afterwards, they're going to go for a Birth. They're going to normal summon this copy of Unicorn, use Unicorn to grab a copy of Theosis, then overlay for a Shangri-Era. Rise Heart comes down next. They'll activate the effect of the Rise Heart, banishing a Big Bang, and then they'll activate the effect of the Shangri-Era, targeting one of our back row, and the Big Bang, targeting the Shangri-Era to cycle that Fenrir. After that, they're going to overlay for an a Rise Heart and fire off Pot of Prosperity. Oh my god, I love when they open absolutely everything. Let's hope that they don't take anything too crazy. Oh my god, is that solemn judgment. Okay, no big deal. Now this infinite impermanence is a lot less likely to resolve, but we still might be able to do it. They're going to go for Cash Tier Theosis for a Unicorn, then a Rise Heart, then Theosis in order to cycle back this copy of Big Bang, which they can set as further disruption, and it's Diablosis time. They're going to go for Diablosis, then they'll activate the effect of a Rise Heart and the effect of Shangri-Era and the effect of Diablosis, which will trigger the effect of a Rise Heart and Shangri-Era. Again, we have two Spell and Trap Zones to work with as of yet. They will set back to us, and we'll see what we can accomplish. First and foremost, Standby Phase into Fenrir, 
here gives us access to tasking. We're going to go for the thrust. I put is going to target it with a rise heart. You might be wondering why they're doing that as it doesn't negate. Well, it's because on a new chain, Shangri Era will negate this one and Diablosis will trigger, which will give us access to zero spell traps at point of resolution. We will try to infip here, but of course they have the solemn judgment. Still, we might be able to do this because we have drawn Santa Claus, but it means we aren't going to be able to tribute over the Arise Heart. Not that it would matter because we are still under Shifter. They're going to trigger Arise Heart a bunch of times. We are going to take it with Triple Tactic Talents. Next, we're going to go Arise Heart. They're going to go Fenrir. It will get banished, as will all of our Quick Play spells, and we are free to actually play the game. Per Lily into Stray Pearly Street. We will go for My Friend Pearly. We'll activate the effect, and we will grab from Deck to Hand a copy of Happy Memory. We're going to Happy Memory targeting the My Friend Pearly, then go for Pearly, and I mean, this isn't pretty, but it is pretty much just a standard Zeus line. We'll go indirect twice with Assembled Nightingale, and then we get to make, by way of Downard, a two-activation Zeus. We'll activate one now in order to wipe the entire field and then pass back to our opponents. They draw for turn a copy of Talents. They'll special summon this unicorn. We'll fire Zeus, and of course, the rip is just unbelievable. They will go into the Pressure Planet, and we'll concede. So we're back with the deck, and, well, loses to Cash Tier is a pretty solid place to be this meta. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, Noir is a hell of a boss monster. It's got a novel form of interaction. Three targeted shuffles from field or graveyard can be a game decider on the spot if they don't have the out. Two, My Friend Pearly is incredible. It's an easily accessible rota for spells, but it also provides recovery if your Noir is outed, meaning you are favored on the crackback in most matchups. And three, in mid to high ceiling hands, attaching multiple sleepy memory to a Noir can draw you two to three cards and completely replenish your grip. The more shots at lingering floodgate hand traps you have, the better. And the cons. One, Droll. It's Droll format. Early on, people were prognosticating that this deck didn't lose to Droll, as you can do some of the searches in the draw phase, but as soon as you get to Perlily, it's over. Despite its limited utility, Droll is often just a game ender. Two, Shifter. This card is devastating to your game plan, essentially making all of your plays heavily neg and card advantage and shutting off plumps for easy Xyz stacking. This also makes Cash an extremely swingy matchup, as playing into a Rise Heart is all but impossible. And three, Kaijus. Everyone's playing Kurikara and Santa Claus, and they leave you with very little, if any, interruption. Not overextending and focusing on replenishing resources can be essential, but often, because you're on a critical mass of quick plays, you won't draw the hand traps necessary off of Sleepy to prevent your opponent from killing you after handing you a Kaiju. Overall, this deck is an interesting concept that plays very differently from the rest of the format. Despite its current 4th or 5th best deck status, should a list kill cash, as is expected, I wouldn't be shocked if this is the best thing worth playing. But right now, it's not living up to the $40 Ultra hype. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shouts out to all my patrons, but specifically, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Apocalypse978, Brett Henry, Bizen Queen, Chaotic Meatball, Kristen Malone, Crispy, Da Bears, Darkmaster Zork, DJ Elephant, Executive Slifer, John Piet, Jordan Kuntz, King Magic Ruler, Night Mary, Luis Hernandez, Materiality, MBT Play Madolce, Mike Carlotti, NH6574, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Soft Doe, Solar Flare, The Hollow King, Tootsie, Troy Says Buy Erasure Is Gay, Vincent Storm, Wonder Waffle, Yuki, and Yor. I couldn't have done it without you.